Hey, Mr. Garage here. Now, uh, we're working on the Project Warrior today. We have not gotten a lot of parts in that we needed to uh, wrap it up. So many things are stuck in transit from the COVID, COVID trap going around. And so we're, we're waiting on a ton of parts, but we're gonna do some more um, odds and ends today. So let's get started. All right, for what we're gonna do today, we're gonna be taking off the carb. We're gonna get the carb out and we're gonna take apart the air box and see what we find in there because I got no idea. So we're gonna get these two items out and I've got the Shindy carb rebuild kit in. So we're gonna start taking apart the carb, start cleaning it. Um, gonna take a look, see what we find at first. And then I've got an ultrasonic cleaner and we'll see how, how that cleans up some of the parts because I like to use OEM where I can or refurbish. But if I need to use some parts out of the Shindy kit, um, then, then of course we will. So. Uh, we're going to start off first. We're going to pull the air filter box and take a look and see what we find there. All right, so we're taking out the last screw, and um, I don't know if we got a stock air filter in here. I don't know if it's ever been cleaned. It looks like it might have because the screw heads are a little wallered out. Um, or if we got an aftermarket filter, we just don't know. So, well, here we go. Let's see what's in this uh, project here. And completely stock foam air filter. Has been cleaned at some point, or it would be far worse than that, but... Kind of messy. Got a new filter coming in, but again, it's all delayed with this COVID crap. So uh, cool. We're gonna get the lid off, and then we're gonna go ahead and pull the carb and start uh, taking the carb down. All right. So we pulled the air box to make it easy to pull the carb. So the carb just kind of floats on this kind of rubber assembly here, this little spacer. So all we should need to do is take out these two 12 millimeter bolts, and we should be able to pull the carb itself off. All right, so we took our two bolts off, um, and the carb we kind of rotated up, so we have to get the throttle cable out. Now, somebody's definitely been in here. We got a lot of little, you can kind of see the twists on the screws, and we're even missing one of the Phillips screws for the carb. So I believe we have to pull the side cover off to get the cable loose, and then we'll remove the cable, and we can get our carb over to our bench. Okay, so we took our side cover off, and we've got our throttle cable here. Now we're replacing the throttle cable so it's cut, because the guy had a twist throttle on it, and I'm actually gonna put it back to a thumb throttle for the family and kids. So we take the throttle cable out, and we just slip off this little brass in, and we're gonna keep that safe. So now to get this portion off, I believe what we have to do, go ahead and take that away there, is we're just gonna take out one Phillips screw that sits up here, and we should be able to pull the cable and the assembly out of there and then we'll have a free carburetor here. All right, so we've got the carb over to the uh, bench. This is our um, Shindy carb kit, so you guys can see the part number on it. So let's see if the video will focus on it. There you go. It uh, looks like 43036 or a 03-307. One of those two numbers up here would be the carb kit. But uh, that's it. Now, I don't really know. I haven't taken apart this type of Makuni, so I'm no expert on it. It kind of seems like the butterfly is jammed, or actually maybe it's because the choke is either out or in. No, choke's in. I can't really seem to get the butterfly to move, or a lot of the parts seem kind of locked up. So I don't know what's going on there, but we're just going to start with some disassembly. So we're going to start with this top cover. It's definitely been off before because the screws are kind of all wallered up. So let's see what we can do here. My son's here helping me. He's knocking a lot of this out in the background while I work on other things. But uh, can you grab me a magnetic tray and empty one? See if you can find one. And that's a little worrisome sign. We actually are getting some really old fuel out of this thing. And I thought it had been drained because the gas tank was empty when we got it. I was hoping it had been drained, but oh, I can smell that nasty old gas. So it has not been drained. So we are probably gonna find a world of mess in here when we pull off this bowl. Doesn't surprise me, pretty typical. I mean, this thing sat so long. Gas is never good this long. I don't care what product you put in there that if it's almost 10 years old, the gas is gonna be just disgusting. We'll probably run it two different ways. Um, I have really good luck with just this can of, I've got a can of Kim Dip over here that I use quite a bit. We'll be using probably some Kim Dip. And then uh, we will put some of the more delicate parts uh, in stuff that needs a little extra cleaning. We'll drop that in the ultrasonic cleaner. So. Oh boy. 
No, I got a yeah, I had a frozen screw on there. That screw's not doing too good, so I don't think that shindy kit had new screws, but we may have to replace that. So let's take a look at the bowl. Let's see how gross this is gonna be. Oh yeah. Already see some. Yeah, it's got some tar, basically like a black tar buildup. Let me see if I can lighten up the camera a little bit so you can see it better. But, um, yeah, a lot of buildup in the bottom. It's pretty nasty. And that gasket's kind of worn out. Oh, man. You can see the main jet here, the big chunks on it. This thing's gnarly. It's going to need a heck of a bath, so we'll, uh, start getting this disassembled and, and see what we can do with it all. But it's definitely in need of a complete disassembly and a really thorough cleaning. So we're probably going to be taking every single piece of this guy apart and redoing it. Probably won't do all that on camera. Next uh, video, um, I'm going to stop it here. We'll just be a lot of the parts disassembled and I'll kind of show you what I removed and, and what's going to need to be cleaned. So. All right, so we got everything taken apart we need to take apart, and it is as worse than expected because I thought everything was drained for the gas tank, but it's just nasty. I mean, you can see some of these parts down here. These things are just gross and uh, very, very gummed up and, and kind of crystallized with all the fuel. Now, I made a mistake here. I was trying to get, I think it was a little pilot out that's 100% clogged. Um, I made a mistake here. I put a little heat on it. I didn't realize this had a plastic sleeve over it. And I totally roached and torched out the plastic sleeve. And that's my fault. I don't, it doesn't seem like this plastic sleeve comes off. So I don't know what I can do about that. I'll probably end up just um, sanding it down or grinding it down and making it really clean so it doesn't get any like little chunks or anything in the carb. That might be all I can do with it. So my mistake. Um, didn't realize that was plastic. I actually thought it was aluminum. But uh, everything else is apart. You know, we're ready to dunk it and just start cleaning all this stuff up. So, uh, again, got my Kim Dip over here and going to give it a bath. And then whatever's still needing attention, we'll move on to the ultrasonic cleaner. All right, so we got the Kim Dip dipping. We got the whole car body actually in it right now. And there's really not room to put anything else in here at the moment. So that kind of fully goes down fully and actually just to get this process started because it's gonna be a lot of hours of soaking uh, see if I can figure out a way to wedge the bowl there we go down in there just like that on the side because it's gonna have to sit so I've done a previous video on Kim dip this stuff works amazing the formula is not diluted it works really well and if you're using the Berryman's which is Berryman's who makes Kim dip if you use their carb cleaner spray that stuff is just straight down right nasty it works um, use really thick gloves with it because thin gloves like say the Harbor Freight blue I think these are seven mil gloves that Berryman's uh, spray stuff actually dissolves the gloves that's how caustic it is so just be really careful when using it it will will burn your hands and and you'll find every little little cut on your hands that you've ever had because it'll eat right through them so it's pretty caustic but like I said for now uh, Kim dip and uh, we're gonna come back here in probably about uh, an hour kind of brush things away and, and see how it's looking. So I'll talk to you then. All right, it's been an hour. Uh, we're gonna pop open the lid on the Kim Dip and we're gonna take a look and see kind of how it's dissolving, especially in the bowl. Kind of rinse it off a little bit here. The bowl barely fit in there, so I'm not sure. Oh, wow. It's, uh already i'm not sure if you can see it but the bowl is totally clean so let me see if i can lighten up the camera here come on camera I'm trying to do the gloves on here we go and of course brand new goes away yeah bowl's already clean that's great result so i'm going to leave this in here for another hour of the bowl but i'm really happy with that and i'll just leave the whole setup in there for another hour I kind of stir it up a little bit and when I get back, uh, we'll kind of see where we're at. All right, we've got some more time on this. Um, probably another hour and a half. Lost track of time a little bit. Went out in this COVID mess trying to find some steak and hamburger. That didn't work out too good. But got enough in the freezer, I guess. 
I'll make do for a while longer. Anyways. Yeah, that solution's looking pretty rancid in there. So, uh, Cheese, can you grab me some gloves? Yes, my son's nickname is Cheese. So, All right. So we're going to get the bowl out. And we're going to get the carb itself out, carb body. I'm going to go wash it up in some simple green. When the wife's not looking in the kitchen sink, because that's how I do it. And uh, depending on how it looks, uh, we'll we'll do a simple green solution and throw it in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner too and see if we can clean up a little better. Okay, so let's take a look at our bowl here. Yeah, brass items look pretty good. I'm going to have to make sure we got flow through here. I may have to use some of the spray carb cleaner. But um, if you can see it, again, I don't know if camera will show it but 100% of all the uh, junk and lighten the camera up is gone she's cleaned up so that's awesome so now let's see if I can get the carb itself out the brass bits in there it's one thing about this chem dip the brass it really cleans the brass which is crazy oh wow Got parts moving real freely now. So that's good. And the mess I made on this piece of plastic I torched. I'm not still not sure what I'm gonna do about that. So I'll have to take a brush inside and we'll brush off. Probably a wire brush. We'll get all this gasket material and this old yuck kind of brushed off. But uh I think we're pretty good. So I'll take those inside. And for right now. We're going to go ahead and put every little piece in here. And I know the float will obviously float. But this uh, Kim Dip in the bucket seems a lot more... Um, not as caustic as the spray. The spray is just absolutely brutal. I'm going to take this choke out, actually. That's got a lot of rubber pieces on it. We'll, I'll maybe stand that up here in a little bit. If you can see, ha, ah, you guys can't see, I see a thing. Uh, all the color on this, this will actually come back to a brass color. So this Kim Dip really does good at bringing brass or bronze items back. I'm super happy with it. So, it's a pin. Drop our needle in there. And then uh, I'm going to try to stand this up. I don't know if I can, if it'll stand up far enough. Let me see what I can do about that. If it'll just kind of hang. Oh, that's awesome. It actually hangs with the rubber bits just out of the chem dip. So that's, that's going to be perfect. Just have to leave it there and not breathe. Um, I don't think I have any other parts that need to go in. Actually, toss that little nylon washer in hurt I got this diaphragm deal on the side it's a little rubber diaphragm and I'm afraid that's gonna rip because it's really old I don't think I want to put that in Kim dip there's no hole in it or anything so it doesn't breathe it just literally looks like a diaphragm assembly so we'll leave this out too. probably wipe that down by hand maybe give it a little bit of a soak and just kind of let it sit over here Okay, um, so I'll put that in just to get the yellowing off so that looks new again. Um, that's going to be it. So I'm going to take these parts in. We're going to clean them in uh, simple green, scrub them up really good, and we'll kind of see where we're at. So uh, we'll be back after a while. So uh, we got a few pieces on the carb that uh, I wanted to clean up a little bit with some paint. So I'm going to sit down here. And... Um, I've got the plastic cover that goes on the side of the carb. Now, you can't see it except in the sunlight, but you can start to see the uh, actual fiber in the plastic glitter, and, and that's bad. That just means the plastic's rotting away. So I'm going to coat that, and I'm going to coat this little top piece. It just looks pretty trashy. So the bottom is still zinc coated, look good, but I'm going to paint that top piece too. Now, 
I'm going to paint it with this. This is what I had in the cabinet. And this really matches the kind of the side covers of the Yamaha. This paint is Black Knight Metallic. Um, I'm going to use this on both of these. It's just a Rust-Oleum um, general spray paint. Kind of works on everything. But I'm going to spray these and uh, give these a nice finish before I put the carb back together. All right. So we've got all the parts here. And uh, everything came out really clean in the ultrasonic bath and the uh, carb cleaner. Um, all the parts that I needed to replace O-rings on, I've already done so. Uh, kind of like uh, this drain or for the bowl, the bowl drain. Um, we have a new O-ring on our little needle there. Um, we've got new O-rings on our choke. And yeah, we've got a lot of new O-rings. I use nitrile O-rings, that's why they look a little bit brown. But I've got uh, O-rings on everything that are brand new. Um, I didn't use all the parts for the shindy kit. Some of those are actually just, I'm just going to put in a little bin for later on, but I did use a main thing I used was the pilot because I, my pilot was a little beat up and it almost stripped out when I took it out. So the ends a little bit mucked up. So anyways, um, on all the O-rings, I use a uh, super lube silicone grease with PTFE. That's what I use in my O-rings before I put them in just so they go in nicely. And, um, Hardware wise, all the screws that are on the carb, almost all of them can be replaced with an M4 by 10 millimeter. There's a few exceptions, but um, these screws are, as you know, crap. The heads strip out on them really easy. So we're going to be using these uh, stainless Allen socket caps with washers, and uh, we'll be uh, using those uh, for this rebuild. Now, this was the slide that I was talking about that I torched. I put new O-rings on it. But you can see how the plastic got really, really, really cooked. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's a sad mess right now. But I did sand it down the best I could, so I'm going to reuse it. I have one coming off eBay. I have no idea what the quality will be, but I think this will be fine to reuse. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. So, um, now I'm going to get to reassembly. And as I reassemble, I'm actually not going to be talking. I'll probably just have some music playing real slow and i'm going to point out what uh what i'm doing at each individual step and i'm going to go kind of slow so you guys can see what i do to rebuild this since i kind of did you a disservice and i didn't show you the disassembly process you'll see the reassembly process um which is you know even better because you you guys know how to put it back together after you took it apart so all right i'll be back in a moment <laughs> 